Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and we're going to start here. I thought this was an interesting tweet. This is um, from, this is when Gary Gensler went and gave his um, uh, statement. He had to give this statement to, before he spoke, I think, in front of the U.S. House of Representatives, July 18th, 2018. Gary Gensler was required by law to sign this required witness disclosure form prior to his July 18th, 2018 statement before the U.S. House of Representatives. I have no financial interest in any digital currency or blockchain related business. I hope that Gary um, did not own any blockchain related stuff. Now, here's this. Um, and I wanted to show you this. this is, I was going to show it last video, but I just ran out of time. So this is from, this is, uh, remember, 322.18, Gary Gensler meets with Clayton to lobby about Bitcoin per um, Charles Gasparri Gasparino's reporting. 427.18 is the video below. We've been having a lot of conversations with people at the SEC. See, what I'm trying to work on here, and then Gary nods yes, by the way. And then the Hinman speech, of course, is on 614 um, right there. Okay, so, so what we have here is um, listen to what they say, because we know Gensler met with Clayton on the 22nd of March, but now we know that, that he was, I'm assuming she, the, she looks at him, he nods, um, that they were talking with the SEC at the time. Yeah. We've been having a lot of conversations with people at the SEC and the CFTC, and I have just been so impressed by a lot of those people. And Patrick, I know you have talked to a lot of them as well. They are your former colleagues, Gary, right? And I've been so impressed with um, their desire to really understand the technology and to really work with it. All right. So now we know that. Okay. So I've been asking about this. Did those conversations involve the Venture Capital Working Group, Hinman speech, Safe Harbor, John Deaton, Charles Casparino. Where's Hinman's public calendar? Who is in those 63 emails? Okay. Um, and then I wanted to show this. If you look at this guy right here, his name is Patrick Merck. And by crazy coincidence, the guy on the left is Patrick Merck. Well, he was the special counsel at Cooley LLP in 2018. They just happened to be a member of the Venture Capital Working Group that helped to get the Ethereum free pass. Okay, um, now I want to show you this because this is an interesting video clip. This is from Gator Trader, the monetary crisis and digital currencies. I want you to I, I, look, I don't know if this guy is full of it or what. I just want you to hear what he says. Listen, bartending. Okay, don't get me started on her, okay? Just cool. <laughs> Let's, well, uh, what, she's oh. our version of your Trudeau. <laughs> So we're talking sort of the next two years. And, uh, you know, again, one of the things that you made clear is that obviously the government's desperation for money to not only maintain the status quo in that way, in their government way to grow it. Uh, so we talk about gold, we talk about Bitcoin. And again, it would seem that uh, maybe not. That's why I want to ask the time frame for over the next two years. You think it's still worrisome that they walk in and say, no, no one else is allowed to create currency and they do something with yeah. Bitcoin. Uh, yes, that's, um, look, they're, they're historically, it's a sovereign right that the sovereign issues the money. Anybody else that issues money was called counterfeiting, you go to jail for life if you weren't beheaded, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I've had intimate conversations with people in government when this thing was starting. And we discussed it, and that's why I put out from day one. I said, look, they're allowing this to take place because that's the way it's sold to the public. Yeah. Then at the end, they just confiscate it and say, thank you, here's our version. So you're already acclimated to cryptocurrency, all right? Uh, like I said, I would go to Starbucks, and you see the younger generation, they just hold up their phone. Nobody even has cash anymore. Um, so 
the younger generation, yeah, okay, fine. So the government has it instead of Bitcoin. I mean, what's the difference? To them, it, there is real no difference. And this is what, it's how they sell it. So this is what's been going on. Um, and you see China, and, you know. Okay, I just thought that was a pretty interesting take. Now from Mr. Intuitive, who is the official cool guy of this channel, um, sent me this from Stefan Huber. Grayscale bought Ethereum and Bitcoin with its XRP sales due to the SEC's action. The SEC not only stole billions from XRP holders, they even made us pay for the gains of Ethereum and Bitcoin. Joseph Lubin is gritting because the SEC filled his pocket. Um, effective January 4th, 2021, the fund removed XRP from the fund's portfolio and sold the XRP holdings to purchase additional tokens of the remaining fund components in proportion to their re re respective weightings. All right. To, and, and I had forwarded that to John Deaton and said, that looks like damages to me. Now, now for something I d failed to cover the other day, Bact went public. And the first thing, what was the first thing I said when Bact went public? What I said to myself is, so Bact is public now, and I've never even heard of anybody with a Bact account. What this says to me is that Bact, remember who owns Bact, it's um, ICE, which is I think the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange, owns Bact. So here's the deal. Let's put, let's lay the picture out. Gary Gensler comes in at the SEC. Bitcoin and Ethereum are non-securities. Gary Gensler, we've shown you videos many times where he's, his version of leveling the playing field is not what yours and my version is. His version is that the playing field has not been leveled for the incumbents. In other words, the JP Morgans and the Goldman Sachs, and he wants, he sees his job to level it for them. In other words, all these crypto exchanges that have been making all this money, the Binance's of the world, the Coinbase's, well, that's just not fair because they haven't been having to play by the same rules that JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs have to play for. It's just not fair. So what do you do? First of all, you create something like a back that's backed by all these Wall Street guys. If I'm betting, this backed will be the back end of some of these platforms that all these Wall Street firms are going to, to put up. Then what do you have? Then you have Gary Gensler saying, well, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, those are commodities. So you all you crypto exchanges out there, you can keep you can keep listing those and you can list tokens that are built on Ethereum because those also are commodity. But don't think for a minute that you can list securities unless you have a securities license. And guess who gets to pick who has those? Me, Gary Gensler. Well, so what do you do? Well, you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go uh, buy on the on these exchanges that where backed is their back in. Okay, and you can play ball there, and you can buy the ones that are designated securities there too. Maybe if we if we allow you. You see how this works, folks. All right. Now, here's our old buddy, Joseph Lubin. Let me do the refresh button here. There are laws in place. The SEC is uh, very aware of what's going on. And we at our company uh, do an enormous amount of legal work um, to ensure that we're um, either selling a tokenized security um, that is um, registered or in conformance with exemptions or a token, a utility token that would not be perceived as a security. So on October 24th of 2017, the SEC is very aware of what's going on. So again, Joseph Lubin, he's, he's literally probably hanging out and going out to dinner with the SEC while everybody else in the industry is for on the outside looking through the glass going, we just can't seem to get any regulatory clarity. Brad Garlinghouse is saying, well, we're sitting here in purgatory Meanwhile, Joseph Lip, for Joseph Lubin and the SEC, it's one big party. That's how it seems. Okay, and then we have this today. Charles Gasparino breaking Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse scorches SEC again on crypto regulations as new Bitcoin ETF hits the street. We'll discuss that, plus my conversation with CEO Adam on how he's going to change AMC to reflect the times. Tune in now. And Mr. B was able to put this video up. So we're going to watch this. Now, folks, words mean things. And I want you to listen to Brad Garlinghouse's words. 
an ETF and what the SEC is doing in terms of regulation. Listen to what he had to say. I think it has had a stifling effect here in the U.S. Uh, you know, hopefully when we get to the end of this, there'll be certainty and clarity. And frankly, it could be a very positive thing for the XRP ecosystem community. That's the one crypto where there is clarity and it is certain. Do you see a settlement of your case in the, in the works? Look, I, I would love to spend less time on this uh, and be able to move forward. You know, the, the one thing that Ripple cares about more than anything, and really for the whole XRP ecosystem, is that there's clarity going forward that XRP is not a security. If that's not in the cards of the settlement, then there's nothing to settle. All right. So... <laughs> In there, he says that there's a, I think the way he said it is there's a scenario where XRP is the only digital asset that has real clarity. Because remember, Gary Gensler will not tell you if Ethereum is a security or not. He thinks it's very clear, but he can't clearly tell you that. Okay. Now, then I want to make sure I remind everybody that uh, John Deaton, I believe, if he hasn't already crossed it, He's closing in on 50,000 people in his class action lawsuit. And so if you haven't already done so, so uh, if you, all you got to do is buy one XRP and you can join the lawsuit. We're, we're going to get this thing over 100,000 people. How about them apples? Okay. Go to John at John E. Deaton one, go to his Twitter profile. You'll see it. He's get, it's the pinned tweet at the very top of his profile. Now, I wanted to show you something. I don't know that I've ever even talked about this. I think I have, but this is iTrust Capital. I wanted you to watch this short clip where they're talking about the custody that, that iTrust Capital has. Explain that a little more if you don't mind. Uh, privacy and, well, not privacy and security. Um, so not hot wallet. How, what, what kind of security guys do you, uh, do you guys use? Yeah, it's mission critical that we yeah. create transparency around that and then we have a plan in place. You know, a lot of people in, in crypto are, are not your keys, not your crypto, right? And that's been ingrained in their minds since the, the moment they got into digital assets. And the way that we look at it, the way that I look at it personally, is that you don't just want diversification of what you own, but also diversification in taxability and diversification in storage. You don't want all of your crypto stored personally on your own wallet. That's too high of a risk. You don't necessarily want all of it on institutional storage. That's also too high of a risk. We have clients who have their own personal wallet for some of their assets, and then they feel really good about the fact that they have cold storage that's institutional cold storage that they outsource through us. Now, here's what's so cool about that. And, and, and I think it's been done intentionally. This goes back to that backed IPO. I've, I've always asked the question on this channel, why is there no platform, including Coinbase, where we can go and have an institutional grade custody where we just put our digital assets there and it's safe and we don't worry about it the same way we don't worry about our stock certificates on E-Trade. Why have they not provided that to the retail investor? Well, there's only one place where institutional custody is provided, okay? And ironic, it's, it's kind of weird how this worked out, but I trust capital has institutional grade custody. In other words, through I have two IRAs with them. I go and I place an order. Let's, once I put money with iTrust Capital, I go and I place an order. Let's say I want to buy $5,000 of XRP. That order, with, right now, XRP is a bad example because you can't get it on iTrust Capital like a lot of other platforms. But let's say I wanted to buy $500 of Ethereum, okay? That order for Ethereum goes out to an order book. Uh, none of this is done on iTrust Capital's platform. They're like a middleman. That order goes out, and then when the order, let's say the order was was fulfilled at um, Coinbase, let's say for an example, then the or, that those that five thousand dollars worth of Ethereum immediately goes straight into institutional custody that iTrust Capital has partners. They have Coinbase custody. They used to have Curve also. I don't know if they still use them or not, but I know they use Coinbase custody. So you're, when you buy that Ethereum, $5,000 worth of Ethereum, it never goes back to iTrust. It goes straight into institutional custody, and you don't have to worry about it the same way you don't have to worry about your stock shares that you buy on E-Trade or Merrill Lynch or anywhere else, okay? It's institutional. Now, I believe that the reason they haven't done that for retail investors in taxable accounts, I believe them they've been waiting for the Wall Street guys to open up their shop. And then all of a sudden they're going to raise their hands and they're going to say, see, 
these guys couldn't do it, but we can do it. Now you can come to us and we have custody and everything. You don't have to deal with all these, these hard wallets and all this business anymore because you can trust us. We've been doing this for a long time. See where this is going? See how this is all unfolding? So if you haven't looked at iTrust Capital, if you want, if you want to have some ta uh, either a tax-free or tax-advantaged account, this is my favorite place that I buy crypto. And I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm going to get, uh, in the next couple of days, I'm going to make another contribution to my SEP IRA, and I will be buying. I don't know what I'm going to buy yet, but I'm thinking about it. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family, itrustcapital.com. Check it out. Tell them DAIC.